My warmest greetings to viewers. You're welcome to Let's Discuss on OSBC TV, another fresh edition in the year. Today on the program, we shall be deliberating on unionism and workers' welfare across the state, I mean the nations. And um, we will look at the issues affecting the nation's workforce and other related issues. Welcome on the program. I am Adebare Ichimakide. And I have my co presenter here with me, Oluchi. Thank you so much, Adebare Ichimakide. Yes, you are welcome to another edition of Let's Discuss. And as Ichimakide rightly puts it, we'll be taking a look at unionism and workers' welfare in Nigeria. We have a guest in the house, someone eminently qualified to lead the discussion on this issue this morning. And he is the chairman of the Nigerian Labour Congress in Russian State, Comrade Christopher Arapashoku. You're welcome to the program. You're welcome to the program. Thank you for coming. So when we talk about unionism, what does it entail? Uh, well, unionism, uh, as far as I'm concerned, it is a platform, a way of you know going for what is good and what is right and that is what it's called a, a, a kind of a front for the workforce the workers you know it is when you have a union uh, that uh, you have a kind of voice for the voiceless people okay uh, nigerians are familiar with the acronyms nsc nigerian labor's congress uh, when was it created, and uh, what are the what what are the, the composition of that uh, umbrella, NSC, and the focus? Well, uh, NLC was you know uh, organized and created in the year 1979, and uh, you know we had a lot of uh, uh, presidents, which uh, one out of them was Kwame uh, Nkrumah, rather. And uh, thereafter, uh, Baba Azar Sumon, who is from uh, Oshun State, also you know came on board and emerged. And uh, under his umbrella, uh, uh, he was the first president to negotiate uh, minimum the world minimum wage with the federal government. And ever since then, we've been you know uh, seeing what is on that. And um, uh, NLC is the first umbrella. For all unions that has, you know, that have a, a kind of a now 52 affiliates on it. All right. Now, what has always been the focus? Because then NLC seemed to be more popular in the past because when there is an issue and NLC speaks, people tend to listen. It commands a lot of respect. What were they doing in the past that the union is not doing now? Well, for me, I discovered uh, where we are, we are lacking a kind of uh, leadership at times. It depends on the leadership. Okay. And um, even if you're a leader or a current champion and you, you fail to you know, consult, don't forget there is experience. There is a lot of uh, the, 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 the so-called former, the leaders who has this experience. There's, there's need for you to go there consult them, of which even in Oshun, it was part of my uh, agenda that uh, we shall resuscitate the elders forum, where we consult, we ask them a lot of questions that during their time, how they were able to, you know, face a lot and, you know, uh, have results at the end of the day. So, uh, if the leadership is miss, or missing rather, that is, if uh, uh, a kind of, let's say there is a, a negotiation, you have to go for a negotiation, at the end of the day, you discovered you, uh, you can't push it more. So all you need to do is visit those leaders. Okay. See them and you know elders' words could be different. The way you are looking at it might be different from the way they are looking at it. It is when we come together, put things together, then you have the result. Okay, going down memory lane. Uh, what have been the achievement of uh, NSC and um, its challenges or shortcomings? 
at the state level or at the national level? Both at the national and the state level. Well, uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, NSC has been able to, you know, achieve uh, a lot under the national president, Comrade uh, Joe Ajayo. And um, I, I, I will tag him Mr. No Nonsense. I want to call him that way. Let me quote that. He's a kind of a Mr. No Nonsense. And, um, you know, government at times, I believe government will come, come government will go, but barracks remains. And uh, there's been a kind of a tough program, a tough, uh, uh, how, do I, how do I put it again? A, a tough, you on the situation of Nigeria, where yeah. we find ourselves now. Yeah. You know, uh, there's need for us to, you know, try and put our heads together. Yeah. One is this, as a government, government cannot do without workers. Workers cannot do without government. It's like when you rub my back, I rub yours too. And uh, as NLC is concerned in Nigeria, we are still pushing. We are not there yet. But I know very soon we will get there. And uh, this year, minimum wage uh, negotiation will speak a lot about NLC in Nigeria. Because as we are, as we are now, we know what is going on. And uh, I wouldn't want to put it this way, or let me also do it that way. When uh, the first uh, mistake the federal government made was uh, the, the, uh, uh, what they did on uh, subsidy. I'll try to remember. You understand. They should have, you know, gotten or tried to get their, their, their targets before doing that. Mm. Even in the U.S., the food, whatever, they are subsidized. Mm. It is a kind of uh, assistance. Assistance, when you talk about funds, we know where we are in Nigeria. We know our capacity, we know our level. You don't just remove subsidy. You should have uh, what it takes before doing that. Really you, you, you get it before going on removing uh, subsidies. And before you know it, we are here, we are where we are now. But the only thing we can do is we need to put that house in order. But as far as NSC is concerned, we will continue to push. Not until government puts smiles on the faces of workers. Then that is the time to relax. Okay. Now you talked about people, you know, NLC going to be more vocal this year to push for a minimum wage. And there has always been this uh, kind of um, diverse opinion about the constant you know, request for minimum wage. There's this um, view that why is labor unions not actually fighting for improvement in the economy? That if minimum wage, for instance, is increased to 500,000 Naira and you're buying a bag of rice for 300,000 Naira, the money has not really increased because the purchasing power will still continue to be low. That why is the union not more interested in fighting for an improved economy where there won't be inflation and all that? Why increase in wage that will still get lost in the markets? Well, let me come down a little bit uh, into my state, which is uh, Oshu. Mm. And I believe I should be able to say much about my state. Of course. As we are aware, we all know that this is civil servant state. It is all about civil service, you know. Uh, it is when workers are well paid that you have this uh, economy improved. It is when they are well paid. It is when they, are, they have good hand. They go to the markets. They, they are not going to hit the, uh, the money. They spend it out. Even when the Naira is so big you, 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 and you, can't buy much. You, 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 you get it. Uh, like I, I said two days ago that uh, in Oshun states, we will not call it uh, minimum wage. It is living wage. Okay. What we are going to fight for will be living wage, not minimum wage. When you call it minimum, then you go by the name minimum. We are not going to go for minimum wage. We are going for living wage. Our people must have a good life. Both living officers and uh, the pensioners. It is when you give them good 
uh, when they are well paid, then you have a good living. And that is what we are going to go for. Okay. So it doesn't really matter if you buy a bag of rice for 300,000 or 500,000, you know, as much as the living wage is. Everyone will, not, everyone will not fall. Okay. You and I, we, we are Nigerians and we know what is going on. You understand? But I believe when workers are well paid, paid the economy of Nigeria, even that of uh, the state here, will definitely increase. Will definitely, uh, definitely improve. Okay, presently, how, how you describe the conditions of living of the labor force across the country? Well, uh, in fact, it's to God, uh, it's, it, it should be a kind of topic for one to discuss. And uh, I believe uh, the government will definitely do something about it. That you can have someone who work for you for 35 years, you know, who try to improve the economy because you, we can't do, your government can't do without workers. You can do it all. That after 35 good years, they, they, they don't have what they call their, their pensions, mm. which is not called for. And uh, the only thing I would say is government should try as much as possible to look into that. That after retirement, they should have what it takes, what they have, uh, what belongs to them, which is the, uh, the pension. Because that is where their, 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 kind of, uh, their life will have to lie on. At the end of the day, after 35 good years, I want to go back home, with, at least meet my family, relax my life, enjoy my life. When the pension is not coming, then you should know if they are knocking into another door. And uh, federal government, state government should please look into that. They also deserve to live a, a good life. Okay. That after work, they should have their life to live. Okay. Okay. Now, okay. Let's look at the, let, let me ask about the issue of this contributory pension. Yes, the contributing pensioners in Russia State are actually, you know, praising the governor. Yep. Uh, saying that the governor, um, Governor Adibona Adeleke, is actually doing what of others course. have not been doing in the past. Of course. But we, which would you still prefer as a worker, the contributory pension or the old pension format? Because now we hear a lot of corruption, you know, with the... the, the money that is being put aside and all that that there are allegations that government federal government you know is dipping hands into the money and kind of diversion. exactly which would you have preferred well as far as i'm concerned if the government is sincere then why would you go for cps if the sincerity is there why would you go for it you have your money at once then you have it at the back of your mind what you really want to use your money for. Not a thing of uh, a kind of a contribution that I'll come today, I'll draw it, I'll come tomorrow. It should be a kind of at once. They release it. You should, have to, you should be able to put your hands together and see what to do with that money. Maybe you want to engage into any business or whatever. It is for you to do that, to take that decision. No government taking decision for you. And uh, God forbid, about him. Some will retire that after some months they are gone. Mm -hmm. After a year they are gone. But once they have their money, even trying to visit or even their, their medication, they'll be able to do that at their own will. Not that they don't have money. They can't visit their doctors. They can't not even the government. But as far as I'm concerned and Ocean State is concerned, you can see what the current government is doing. The last bond was 2.9 billion and that will be the first ever in Ocean State and uh, I was there live and direct I wish you were there to see the, uh, the kind of jubilation the kind of happiness in the, uh, you know on the faces of the pensioners you know I was glad and happy that we have uh, a kind of uh, government under the umbrella of uh, Senator Dr. Ademola Jackson Rodina Deliki for putting smile on the faces of workers of Oshun. In fact, it deserves a kind of, uh, you know, applause. Applause. You, you get it. Because okay. Okay. when government is doing what is right, mm. then they will enjoy it. Mm. When, when you believe 
because I could collect there was a day I met with Mr. Governor, you know, I I started discussing, bringing a lot of things, uh, you know, what is on ground that the past government, they were unable to do this and that. After saying everything, the next thing Mr. Governor did was, Arapa, I said, Your Excellency, sir, where I come from, people don't cry. Mm. I was moved. Mm. I was moved. I was shaking that mm. if someone, a man, could say this, the number one telling me where I come from, mm. people don't suffer. Mm. No, it means a lot. And yet he's doing it. Mm. I just want to, you know, appeal to Mr. Governor, the state government, to continue on this good sketch job. They should. And I believe and that's the with God, leaders that, Nigerians are that is what we want. Mm. That is what we want. All right. A few months ago, there was news in the town when, that the federal government took from a pension fund, perhaps to meet certain needs. Uh, what is your take on that and uh, the possible consequence of, of such? I, I actually wouldn't know what happened and I, I don't have that fact yet. You understand? Oh, I saw some, uh, 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 let me say, document flying over on the social media. You know, I wouldn't want to go deep into that since I am not there. I don't know much about what really, really transpired or happened there. But if, if, if it is true, what, what will you, how will you react to that? Perhaps no. it comes to truth that the public funds, were, I mean, the pension funds were diverted. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it will be a, a, a kind of bad idea. Mm. Why will government do that? It is, it, is, it is something that they shouldn't even have, to, you know, have any thought of doing. Mm. And that's it. All right. We call it very spade. If that happened, then it is really, really bad. All right. All right. Thank you so much, Comrade Christopher Arapwansho, mm. for he is the chairman and you'll see Nigerian Labour Congress in National State. And he is our guest on Let's Discuss today. He is discussing unionism and workers' welfare in Nigeria. Now, let's come to Osho State now. There were issues with the NLC before you came aboard. Yeah. How was it resolved and how did you emerge the winner of the union? Well, I, I want to, let me start by appreciating God Almighty for this opportunity to come and serve. Though it wasn't an easy tax coming on board, you know, but, uh, you know, as gods, we have it. And um, he is the only one who I, I want to appreciate because why am I saying that he started it? I believe in God. I believe in God's doing. And uh, he started it and uh, he, he gave us victory at the end of the day. So it wasn't easy. And even the other camp happens to be my friend. And uh, I, I told him election will come, election will go, but there's need for every one of us to come together to have what we call one front so that we'll be able to get what belongs to our people. And um, like I said earlier, it wasn't easy coming on board, you know, uh, it's like facing a lot of uh, gladiators, you understand, but at the end of the day, people's voice were heard. And uh, the people, they, are, they have spoken through their votes, and of which, uh, at the end of the day, we thank God, we came out with victory. And do you have any special program, any special focus, any special thing you want to focus on that you wish you would achieve? For the workers uh my 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 target is happy living okay workers in Oshun must live a happy life and that is my target that can be attached with different kind of things the most important thing is when they are smiling i will smile but the other day if if it should go the other way around you know what it means so the whole thing we, uh, that is our target is for workers of Oshun to smile. Uh, prompt payment of uh, pensions, regular payment of salary, as and when do. And uh, I want to say this loud and clear, 
workers' welfare is not negotiable at all. All right. Um, what involved your decision uh, to be the chairman of the labor force in Russia? Well, let me start by saying this. Uh, I will be the seventh chairman out of the chairmen that have served as far as Congress is concerned in Ocean. And uh, out of uh, the six, five men told me. Okay. Starting from Baba Diajayi, is that late? And also the late uh, Comrade Oseni, is that late? And uh, Comrade Femi Taiwo is a living uh, witness. And uh, Comrade Saka Adeshinya, and the last Comrade Adekomi Jekyll. So five mentored me out of six that Ocean State have been able to produce as far as the Congress is concerned. And uh, I think I've been able to, you know, put things together. I'm talking about the experience. And uh, I want to say it's just a grace because. I've, I've served at the local level, state level, zonal level, and the national level. I've been able to, you know, represent the state as labor in all kind of levels. And I wouldn't know, you know, what the the what workers, the people, you know, what they what they saw and what they see in me. To have said, Arapa, we want you to lead. And this, I see it as a kind of a call that ever since I started this journey, it has been a kind of we want you to come here, we want you to serve, we want you to serve. And I believe I've not been disappointed there, and I don't want to start now. So the focus is just that uh, what they saw, what they are seeing, then I should continue on it. You know. I, in fact, let me say, in the beginning, I never thought of this. Mm -hmm. It was the people who, who called me, Arapa, there's need for you to move here. We need people like you, you know, I've sat in different capacities. And I believe they saw some things which I've been doing and they want me to come here and come and serve, which I'm ready to serve. To the glory of God, I am now the chief servant. Okay, how appropriate and transparent was the electioneering uh, process that brought you into power? And uh, what are the secrets behind your victorious emergence? Well, it was free and fair. I wish you were there. It was as if we were, we, it were, it was as if we were uh, about or we were on uh, a, a kind of student who want to sit for a job. It is one table, one delegate. Just one the, table, just one, you understand, one delegate. And, you know, once the, the sheets were distributed, you are to tick for whosoever you want. So there's not even, a, 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 there's not even a, 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 a chance of space for one to come and whisper on your ear. Let's read this way. Okay. You have to decide who is going to lead you. And that's what happened. All right, thank you so much. Now, the LLC in Osho State, you know, takes decision based on the decision that is taken from with the federal NLC. Yeah. Because it is one umbrella body. Now most of the time when the national NLC negotiates workers wage, the federal government pegs it at a particular percent. Now state governors will come out and say, No, we cannot pay that. We will pay so so and so. Why is it always that? Bearing in mind that workers in Nigeria are one. They go to the same market, they spend the same money to buy different things. So why do um, does the negotiation or at the federal, why does it not reflect with the states? Well, it all started that way and I don't want to stop it. And is it the right thing? Yeah, you, you are right because I also used to, you know, Make I am used to making such uh, asking such question too that we go to the same market 
the same road, build on the same land. Irrespective of whatever states anyone is, it's still this act. Then why is that of federal government uh, pay quite different from the states? They started that way, but I believe uh, if we are able to push, we might be able to achieve that by thinking it that we are all civil servants. Forget about the call. Uh, they, they, they used to call some federal government workers, state government workers, workers are workers. Workers are workers, a worker is a worker. But uh, down to our states, I don't know why I have this feeling. Ocean will come out with the best, if not one of the best, as far as the living wage is concerned. That is what is on my mind. Who, if not the best in Nigeria, will be one of the best in Nigeria as far as living wage is concerned. What am I saying is, the, the governor on Grand is a man of the people who has, you know, uh, a kind of a large heart, a listening governor. Then when we get to the table now to, you know, push it. So you, you, you've been talking about minimum um, living wage now. Yeah. And you said there will be a very high push for it this year. By his grace. How much are we looking at here? Yeah, we've not started. Okay. When we get to the bridge, we we'll now to cross it. All right. But you just feel that whatever it is, is going to make workers happy. By, by his grace. By God's grace. And when are you going to start? It's almost a year when um, subsidy was removed. By May, it will be a year. So when would the labor union start requesting for a fresh? I, I um, believe uh, by April, they should start at the federal level. Okay. And uh, I know there is a target and uh, uh, there is a target once that is concluded okay. at the federal level then the state will have no choice than to start the admin moment. But as far as we are concerned, like I used to tell my people, we are not going to rush in Ocean. Oh, right. mm, we are not going to do that. We want to remain calm to see what all the neighboring states are doing so that I wouldn't want Ocean to be the sixth or behind any states. You know, Lagos State, you can't compare that of uh, the, uh, the uh, um, uh, le no, you can't even, the, uh, economic the, level. the economy level, you mm -hmm. can't compare it yes. with that of Ocean. Exactly. But one thing is, if we are not the best, we'll be one of the best and we, that is our own target. Okay. In the past, the board leaders have been accused of uh, indifferent attitude, neglecting uh, the fight for the common man. Uh, they were alleged that uh, they are so selfish, they know they, are, they pursue the, their, their own personal interest at the uh, expense of the Nigerians as a whole. Um, I hope you justify that and uh, as the new chairman of the NSC in the state, what do you think you want to do differently? Well, I don't want to accuse any leader because they came, they served, and uh, they bowed out of the, their service. And we should talk about we that are now serving. And uh, I know with God all things are possible. We are going to make a lot of differences as far as the leading is concerned. And we'll make sure we are focused and uh, we will make sure we, you know, uh, have a kind of an open door policy that uh, we are accessible, that people can see us, you know, talk to us on their problems. And uh, we know we are going to solve this with God Almighty on our side. In your, in your major inauguration speech, you mentioned a desire to resuscitate this service week. And... Uh, with sporting and well activities. And, uh, 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 what are the extents of this? What are the, your target goals? Well, uh, as the current state chairman of Nigeria Civil Service Union, uh, the, uh, the, the Civil Service Week is a week we, we, we used to celebrate. And I don't want to stop that. I just see it as a kind of a, 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 a forum, a place, to meet workers and a kind of bringing workers together. And uh, 
uh, the, the ones who have been doing in the past, awards are attached. Mm. To celebrate excellence. You, you understand? Uh, it's a kind of motivation. Mm. You try and motivate workers. It's a kind of uh, a return of good work. So when you award someone who has been, you know, dedicated to his or her duty, then you are challenging another person that no, you have to copy from this person, see what this person, learn from this person, so that you can also be the best. So at the end of the day, we'll have be the best out of the best and the best in the service. All right, thank you so much. Thank you. Now, sometimes when you talk about unionism, what mostly comes to mind of many is industrial action. You know, you cannot really remove industrial action from unionism. But the world over, unionists have been looking at ways, you know, employing other strategies of negotiation apart from strike. But that has not been the case in Nigeria. It's like the only language that workers or unionists employ to talk with those in authority is only that strike action. What are the other alternatives to strike? Well, uh, as far as I'm concerned, the word strike should be the last option. Okay. That should be the last option. And uh, why that is uh, applied for is when you have a government who is not ready to listen to what you're hearing for. And it is our own right to press on the demands of those who uh, gave us the mandate, which are workers. It is our own duty. But when you have a government or a governor who doesn't have listening ears, who is not ready to listen to you, like I said, uh, uh, their government is different, in fairness to God. There are, uh, some of what he has been rolling out, we did not even negotiate for it. There are some policies, there are some uh, uh, kind of uh, programs that the governor is even doing without negotiation. So when you have someone who will call you, who will, you know, give you that time to talk, to discuss, you know, you cannot win all wars on the battlefield. Okay. You will definitely come back to the drawing table to fix things. So once you have a listening governor who is ready to listen to you, to know how your people are feeling, then you, you, the word strike will not be applied. But it is when you have someone who doesn't want to listen to you, then you have no choice than to go for strike. And that's it. That most of the time, when you fight for workers' interests, it's mostly those in, in, in um, government workers, for instance. What happens to those that are in private organizations who fight their interests? Well, as NSC chairman, we have many affiliates. In Oshun, we have 32 affiliates. Okay. And uh, we, ha we have those ones from private sector. Okay. We have that, we have that of NOE, Construction, uh, NOPENC, ETC. Okay. So since they are an affiliate of NLC, then we are one. All right. Okay. What, what is your take on political participation by labor leaders in the country? Uh, and how will you describe the current trends in the country that's facing politics? <laughs> well, like I said earlier, I use the word, you rob my back, I rob your back. Once you have the right to vote, then you have practice politics. On the day of election, on the feed, I am to vote for who I want. You are to vote for you who you want also. So you practice politics. Will you advocate for moderation? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I wouldn't know where you are driving at. You so know, let me cite example of the NSC president. Okay. He was in the Imo state. Yeah. Uh, to stage a protest, to lead a protest against workers' welfare. Mm -hmm. But at that time, it the election, <laughs> I mean, it uh, uh, it's, mm. it's in process. The electionary uh, campaign on all those things was, was in place. Uh, was it appropriate at that time or a similar thing 
That's why I say we advocate for moderation because people Nigerians have been blaming him of his involvement in politics. <laughs> He's entitled to his own opinion. All right. And I I think and felt what uh, the national president did was trying to yeah, you use that opportunity to hit at the you know the governor. You know they might be having a kind of uh, discussion behind the doors, uh, uh, negotiation that maybe at the end of the day it's you know deadlock. And uh, he felt, come, this is the right time for me to use this so that the governor will know what is happening. So and it went wrong. He used that way. All right. Now it went wrong as we have rightly put it. Yep. Let's look at protection for unions now because it was attacked and it was not okay. Don't you? This, this, there, then he declared um, a strike, and many states joined. Now, is there any steps that has been taken by the union in general to ensure that that kind of attack does not repeat itself again? Yeah, because of course. There will always be need for peaceful protest. Of course. Future. So, what are the steps? Well, let me let me uh, to be sincere. I want to say this out loud and clear. You know, we all condemned that act. We have every right to, you know, ask for our people's rights. And NLC is not just uh, a body or an umbrella that one can toy with. Whatever affects the national president of NLC as, you know, affects every one of us, not even as labor leaders, but as workers. Whether he gets it right or wrong, he is there as a president and must be respected. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right. Let's still look at the issues of uh, strike action and the position of the industrial court. On many occasions, the demands of the labor force uh, have been checked, all their decisions have been checked by the uh, court verdict especially the industrial court, who restricted from backing on strike action or whatever. How would this, how would you, what's your take on this uh, trend? Uh, are there possible means of uh, challenging uh, their grievances to the government? Now, you know, we can as well use uh, a kind of different channels mm -hmm. in doing that. Then, like I used to tell my people, law is law. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, when you have uh, a kind of uh, a, 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 a judgment, it could be a kind of uh, injunction stopping you to do something, then we should abide. Law is law. When, when uh, a law is, you know, enacted or uh, uh, when you have a, maybe a kind of pronouncement or a, a document that is telling you state action, Court say the man should obey that, then we hack you. We must respect the law of the land. Thank you very much. Right. Now, one um, of the ways that people are being paid in some parts of the world is um, they are paid hourly on hourly basis. You know, and there was a time people started something saying, why can't Nigeria? You know, employ that kind of payment system where when work can work for an hour or a week, you pay. You don't wait till a month. Are you in any way looking at that direction? Yeah, honestly speaking, before I even came on board, I want to say I go with that. Okay. You know, even doing that will, you know, relieve one from stress. Those living in diaspora, you discovered they move from one job to another. Mm -hmm. It is how you are energetic, how you can, you know, work. The energy put in or you put in at times will determine what you go home with. In Nigeria, it is eight to four. But there in, uh, it could be any, any abroad, is per hour. I may choose, I want to work for just four hours and I want to use the main day to relax my life, to relax with my family. 
but we are also trying to push that if uh, Nigeria can also adopt that, then you will see that uh, we, we will definitely have a lot of workers who will be energetic to, you know, do their duties. All right. What are your expectations from uh, the state workforce during your tenure of office? Uh, Noting that, uh, and, and at the same time, I want to ask you, uh, what are the possible consequences of having uh, internal ranking or division within the state workforce? Well, I would say we are not divided. Even the election that was just concluded, we'll be having a meeting next week where everyone will have to come. Then it's an, a kind of internal discussion. We don't have problem. Election will come, election will go, but we must remain focused. Because what we are trying to do is to serve. And if truly we want to serve them, we must come as one house. So that our people will enjoy and smile at the end of the day. Because the house that is divided by itself cannot stand. And workers united can never be defeated. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Now, for workers to be efficient in carrying out their duties, there's always need for training and training. It's your union looking at that angle. Well, as the state chairman Nigeria Civil Service Union, before I became the NLC, every year, uh, government of the day used to, you know, approve a course for uh, clerical officers, executive officers at uh, Ocean State uh, Staff Development Center yearly. And uh, we are not going to stop that because uh, training and retraining is even part of the productivity day that we are going to, you know, resuscitate. And uh, with this kind of uh, government we have, uh, let me even shock you. Uh, by his grace, between month end and first week of next month, we are going to have a kind of a training for labor leaders in the states. Okay. We, I want that to be a kind of a opening remark, in all remarks. So we are going to do that, and uh, it's on the way. And uh, I believe between now and month end and first week, we'll be having training of labor leaders, uh, labor leaders in the state. And by extension, we will definitely go down for all the workers in the state where we have training and retraining of officers. It is when you, you know, try to put more, uh, refreshing your brain with a lot of uh, new things that you will be able to, you know, work on. The, you know, now what we have, what we've been having is new system, new system. When you go here, what you've been doing and uh, for almost like maybe in the past, like 10 years, two years, three years, is different from what is happening now. I could remember there was, uh, there, uh, some years ago, we once had a, a kind of this typewriter. Okay. It's later turned to IBM. Now we don't even see the IBM again. It is now computer everywhere. Then you must be familiar to what is happening of the day. Okay, what legacies or virtues does your administration intends to foster or uphold? Well, I, I want to say we have a role model, which is Baba Azan Sumon. Okay. He's also my mentor. And uh, Baba called me two days ago, and of which uh, very soon I'm going to see him too, because I have some questions with him, which for him rather, uh, how he started, you know, is the type that we used to talk. And uh, what I need from him is the way he was able to put smile on the faces of workers when he was still the president of Nigeria. How he negotiated the minimum wage because he started it. Okay. The, war, the way he was able to achieve it. You understand? Once we are able to put all those things together, then it's part of the legacy we're talking about. All right, our time is fast spent. But before we go, I will need to ask these questions. Okay. Most of the time, there's always been this allegation that, yes, it's a general trend. Everyone believes that politicians are corrupt. 
and not only politicians, most Nigerians generally are corrupt. And they always say it is always difficult for any political um, office, uh, office holder to carry out corrupt tendency without connivance with the workers. So what is your union going to do in that regard? Well, as far as I'm concerned, workers in Oshun are different. Okay. And I uh, have so much belief in them. And uh, I believe once, it is even part of the training we are talking about to, you know, sensitize our people on the way to run their office, their work, you know, having a good record and tracks. And uh, through the, 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 the proposed workshop and seminars, we will be able, you know, to talk to them, give them more, synthesize them on uh, what should be done. And uh, I believe in ocean workers. I believe in them. I believe in them doing the right thing. And I know definitely they are going to continue on their right tracks. Okay, what is your good way messages to serving and retired uh, workforce? Uh, you know, I started with the word happy living. Mm. I want to promise them we shall have happy living, both the serving officers and retired officers. Because take it or it, leave it, one day we are going to join them. So, whatever you do now, definitely you are going to meet it. So, I want to tell them to feel relaxed. Relax, and definitely they will enjoy. Alright, uh, yes. This is the complaint point of the program. We have been engaging the new elected chairman NSC Ocean State Chapter, uh, Comrade Christopher Alapasuko. We appreciate you for coming on the program. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And this is where we'll be saying goodbye on today's edition of Let's Discuss on behalf of the executive producer Akiola Olabi. My name is Dolu Chiamo. I'm from. I am Adibari Jumagdei Singh. Bye-bye.